Sometimes I just want simple directions. See, as a kid, I played Underground Troop, drove a 350Z with a map view and a simple arrow to follow. Well, as an adult, I drive a 350Z. I've got that map view on my head unit, but no simple arrow to follow. It works. It's the right one. Slight problem. Yeah, this is sick. So I need to find somewhere to put this screen. Now, being a sporty car comes stock with a couple gauges. There's volts, oil pressure, and a digital screen. Now, I did consider swapping this one out, but it does give valuable information. And even though the controls for that screen are at arm's reach, if I replace it with a touch screen, it's not, I have to lean in. So I need to find somewhere else to mount a screen. And then I realized, what about the A pillar? So if you did engine mods, those extra gauges are commonly mounted across this A pillar. So what if I just added a circular touch screen to it? Cool, we've got our pillar. To get a 3D scan of the pillar, I downloaded some photogrammetry apps and Kiri Engine gave me the best results for the free options available. But like most, it struggled with the smooth plane surfaces. So I added some unique markings to some tape where I wanted the mount to be, and that scan was better. But then I realized I need to scale that scan to then trace the scan. So why don't I just trace the exact curve that I need to measure. So I found this cool tool online called a contour gauge. It looks like it's a tool that's used for woodworking to trace the contours of a surface, but I found a 3D printable file, which I'll link below, that should do the trick. I noticed the pillar had a mostly flat surface, so I made the strips run parallel to that face. But then I noticed a problem. These lines here, that edge and this edge, aren't straight. So there's curves for where the curves start and stop. I don't even know how to do what I want to do in the software yet, so I'm just going to take a photo so I can trace that, and we'll go from there. Now, for printing car parts, I can't use regular PLA because inside the car, it gets above 55 degrees, which is when PLA starts to go soft and warp. I can still use PLA to print prototypes, but for the final product, I'm gonna opt for PETG, as this will withstand about 85 degrees until it starts to warp, which is much better for a car in the Aussie summer heat. Ideally, I would use ABS, which is what most plastic car parts are made from. However, I don't have the proper ventilation set up for my 3D printers to print ABS at home as it creates toxic fumes. And so I'd be better off opting for today's sponsor, PCBWay.com, where I can simply upload a file and select ABS as the print material, then choose a print color and quality to get an instant quote to be manufactured and shipped. They can make you a custom PCB, do CNC machining and other advanced manufacturing methods. Big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Which one's done? Oh. The printer down here. It's you, you're finished. Heck yeah. What do you reckon, Norm? It's very cool. I like it. This is for the bottom. That's not bad. Not perfect, but it's not bad. I'm actually pretty impressed with how that worked. The other one I made a bit thinner for the top. Very daunting trying something like this because I haven't done it before, but it's um it's been pretty fun. Ooh. That's got a few different high spots. So by now, you're probably thinking, Cam, how are you gonna do the screen? And I've been asking myself that a lot. See, the Need for Speed Underground 2 arrow is like a magnetic compass that just points to the next street. That wouldn't be very practical in real life. I reckon something like a rally car game, we have an arrow to say what the next turn is, the distance until that turn, and then I could have like the street name. If I put all of that inside a circular screen, that would be sick. And yes, you may be thinking exactly what I was thinking. I bought a smartwatch. I picked up this first gen Pixel Watch for 99 Australian dollars second hand. And without the straps, it's just a smart touch display. And once paired to my phone, I now have access to a bunch of apps. So I went for a drive to see if it would do what I need it to do. Oh, 
So when I started it from the watch, Android Auto just like reset. Yeah, I think it doesn't like me having Android Auto running from the phone and my watch at the same time. First, unplug my Android Auto dongle. Oh, now it's on my phone? Head north on Williamson Street towards Ship Street. I just want it on this screen. What is going on? Lock my phone. There could be updates for the watch because this has not gone well at all. It keeps opening it on my phone. No, I don't want you on my phone. I want it on my watch. All right, so that failed. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, see this line here? It's like straight, 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 curves down. And so I'm going to redo that tape so that I can get a better reference point for the bottom measurement. And then I'm going to create a mount for the screen to like dock into separately. Once I've got both of those working, I can then join them together, which I don't know how to do, but I want to learn it today. I'm not looking forward to measuring this watch. See, for most of my projects, I've pulled the nice flat and square circuit boards from their curvy and unique shaped enclosures. This made modeling my brackets for 3D printing easy. But with modeling this watch, every surface is curved and the curves have curves. Like there's not a single flat surface on it. I thought I would try a magnet like they have on a charging dock to stop the watch from sliding around. But I realized that doesn't stop it from rotating when I push and spin the crown. It works, it's the right one. Finally. So many iterations. So I added these little nubs and got them to align with where the watch strap mount is. So now once it's clicked in, you can scroll it. It's not going anywhere. It won't fall out, don't even need magnets. And a little press on the left side pops it out. So good. Yeah, no magnet, that's right. And it doesn't fall out. And after some fine tuning, I can now join the bottom and top curve of the pillar for the mount to the car. Slight problem, angle is the opposite. Is that right? A little bit shorter and one a little bit longer on the other. This is so hard to do. Turns out I mislabeled the top and bottom curve at some point, so I just need to switch them around. Okay, so this is almost perfect. It goes right around the pillar. There's a little bit of a gap from where the pillar is from the frame of the car, so I can wrap the plastic around a bit more. And then once it kind of slots in, this weather strip tucks it up and ain't gonna fall off. You got steering wheels here, the pillar's there, and so it was like an angle like that. But then if you put it in the software, it's like this. The first challenge is to make the watch mount the correct orientation to the pillar mount so that when I'm sitting back in my seat, the screen is facing me. And then I need to figure out how to join the two together. You might remember from when I was building my custom PC that I said I bought Plasticity, this new 3D modeling software, because it contains x -nerbs. XNURBS joins multiple parts together with curved surfaces. Whoa, why have you gone in so much, bro? It took multiple iterations to get the screen to not only face me, but be level when mounted, but for every version, it had a pointed seam where the two XNURBS sheets joined. I learned that in Plasticity, that if I made a curved path, I could then tell the XNURBS plugin to use that as a guide for the curved surface. This greatly reduced the seams visibility, and through some fine tuning, I was able to make this the curviest model I've ever made. Man, this worked out so good. So I could hook around the end, that go at the side where the window is, it will then wrap around and clip to the side where the weather strip is right between these two notches. That looks so cool. It's just hanging onto the pillar. So now I've just got to bow slot it into the car. I love it. So I need to get a haircut. Boneless barbershop. Yep, search 12 minutes away. All right, let's go. Got directions on the screen. Hopefully that stays on. I haven't tested it. Like, 
1.2 kilometers turn left onto McIver Highway. Yes! That's sick. No, the screen went black. I was going to double check because I think the always on display setting doesn't really work for that, but it might work. Oh! No, it stayed on maps. It just dimmed. Oh, that is exciting though. I can still read that. It's very dim, but I can read it. So is this upgrade worth it? Well, six years ago when I bought my Z, I upgraded the Tape Deck 6 CD stacker to a touchscreen. That was worth it. And adding the AA wireless dongle to make my wired Android Auto head unit wireless, also worth it. But this project was an experiment. And unfortunately, it seems smartwatches aren't designed to work well off a of wrist, which is a shame because I was hoping like the car mod community could really run with this smart pod watch pillar mount idea. The made roadblock is the watch has a built-in battery and Google themselves say that you need to avoid charging the device in direct sunlight. And so connecting the watch to the wireless charger, encapsulating that in black plastic on a dashboard in direct sunlight on a hot Aussie summer's day is a recipe for disaster. I thought about removing the battery from the watch, but then looking at iFixit's teardown, it looks like it's a multi-pin smart battery, which means I can't just hardwire this straight to a car battery. I also left the watch in my car whilst editing this video, and it got hot enough inside to shut down on just a 20 degree day. Maybe there is a smartwatch that can have the battery removed and be hardwired, but then it's still gonna function like a smartwatch, dimming the screen when you don't touch it for a while. Plus, I still can't use maps on my car screen at the same time. But you can pair the watch directly to a car's Bluetooth, pretending that they're headphones, making it a standalone music player, or media controls for the paired phone. Oi, dude, the funny thing is that the main reason I wanted the watch is because I can simply scroll down on the crown and see the upcoming turns. That would be so helpful for when I go to Melbourne because I might be driving like a three lane road and the GPS is like, turn right from any lane. And then afterwards it's immediately like, turn left from the far left lane. And I'm in the far right. And I'm like, bro, the heads up would have been nice, right? But then when I was filming this video, I learned I can simply swipe sideways on Google Maps for Android Auto to see upcoming turns. <laughs> Man, why did I learn that like ages ago? That would have been so nice to know. Oh well. So the WatchPod dock is a proof of concept in a sense. Um, doesn't really do what I wanted it to do, but now I know that it doesn't. <laughs> I learned some new 3D modeling techniques and it looks cool. Yeah, this is sick. 